Hugely important show today, week one waivers episode, news to talk about, injury reactions. We've got you covered, all of the best pickups for the week, and I want to invite you to be part of our fantasy football community at jointhefoot.com. It's where the entire Foot Clan hangs out. There are so many perks, extra episodes. Check it out at jointhefoot.com, and make sure you subscribe on YouTube, like the video, enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hey, it's Corlin Sutton, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore is here. Yes, I am. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? I am too. I'm Andy Holloway. <laughs> the Deucers. We in are the, here. In the house. Oh, <laughs> oh hello. <laughs> wow. Right. Oh, it's, Whoa, wait. Hold on. Ladies I, and gentlemen, uh, no one can see this yet because uh, hashtag Deucer Cam not yet available. Right. Be careful with that hashtag. Hashtag uh, blame owl. Yeah. Uh, we're, we are working on it. Brooksy is in the back. And he's got he's got the snapback hat on a backwards. I noticed this what yesterday. What is going on? What is this cool new Brooks that we got? Yesterday, I ran into – we were just walking in the hallway, and you know he came out of his office. I came out of mine, and – Face to face with backwards hat Brooks, just Joe Cool over here, and I was like, "Whoa, I'm so sorry, I'm in your hallway, <laughs> sir." Did I, you uh, you prime a leather jacket or no? I hadn't worn a backwards hat in about 20 years, but uh, the, wow. the deucers for uh, it's football time. We all we all wore jerseys and backwards hats for mm. and I you mean, and our, you you liked it, yeah. You liked the way it felt, and you no longer hit the brim of your hat on the microphone like you always used to do. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, and then did Kyle the Borgogany shaved his face or? Yeah, I had to. I lost. It's my morning. Okay. Okay. It's how you, you're right, in morning. Yeah. All right. uh, we have waivers on the show today. Very excited about that. Welcome to the fold. And then quarterback streamers, we're going to talk about those. Some NFL news. A lot of reaction over the weekend. There's a lot going on. And, um, you know, we are just like you. We are in our league of record. We are in the leagues, the dynasty league, and trying to make adjustments. I sent out six trade offers this morning in one of my leagues. I didn't get one. You wild man. And trying to put the pieces together in the right in the right way. <laughs> yeah, I mean we've got to start with the corners. <laughs> that's see, that's why I didn't start with any corners. I started with the middle. Oh, that, I mean that's a bold strategy. Yeah. Uh we have a, a a question, a common question from the Foot Clan on today's show that I myself would like an answer to, gentlemen. So mm. we will get to that uh, when we talk wide receivers. And I know no one would be so foolish as to give up on their season after one week. Correct. But just stay calm. Yeah. And I, I just spoke to, I ran into a Foot Clan uh, listener out in the wild. And this is the first person I've met that told me last year they were 0-6 and they won the championship. No, nice. There we go. They made the playoffs as just a last-ditch effort, won the championship. Jason says that every year you don't win your championship at the draft. You're setting the foundation, and we're here to help you win. Yeah, now this is the road to the championship. I lost in the league of record by zero, oh boy. 0 0.28 fantasy points. Man, that's rough. I, I, hope, I hope that it wasn't like on you know Russell Wilson's last offensive play. Yeah, yeah it wasn't <laughs> on his last little shovel. <laughs> He just got just enough yards. And you already over. loved Russell Wilson so much, right? Man. I mean, he's kind of your unlimited favorite guy. I, I can't stand that. <laughs> oh, and by the way, did you notice anything in Our, particular I, that happened? I wasn't sure when we were going to get into Last night, it. I mean, I do have a reminder from yeah. the show earlier All right. in oh, the week. Play it. Now, to give you mad dap, you have been great with these. Okay, and you have on that done part. them very well historically. When it shocks me, but this one's insane. <laughs> there so, you go. Yeah. I mean, it was an incredible call. 
Uh, I mean, we there's nothing else you can – you can't spin it. If the, you're listening the, for the first yes. time and you don't know what the call – Andy said this was his – Basically, his upset of the week was he felt like the Seattle Seahawks could win this game against the Denver Broncos, which the money, Vegas, fans, nobody believed. So, congratulations. Yes. It was, it was wild. Call. It was, I, you know, Seattle, Geno Smith. He looked fantastic, at least during the first half of the football. And the Denver Broncos. Oh, yeah. Holy freaking crap i like, could not hack it that team just left the field covered in their own poo poo <laughs> i mean two <laughs> two goal line fumbles oh boy one that cost me maybe a win yeah like the, they lost 17 to 16 two goal line fumbles the most one of the most egregious endings of all time where they have a full minute three timeouts to go down and you know just score some points they completely turtle shell and say we're we're good playing for the field goal the jerry judy drops uh, an easy first down and then they're they're left to uh, uh this this javante be the hero and get us a first down which he did his best he got some yards back and then they say we have a $250 million quarterback that we could try and get a first down with, keep this game going, get a little bit closer. We still got some timeouts. We have plenty of time on fourth down. But no, we would rather roll out our kicker to what would have tied the NFL record. There has been one field goal in the history of the NFL that has been that far, and they said that's the play we are going to go with. But but he's got a big leg, Mike. I oh, I mean, super accurate from sixty plus. Yeah, uh, according to Warren Sharp on his field goals from sixty two plus in two thousand sixteen, a sixty two yarder missed. He had another sixty two yarder missed in twenty eighteen, a sixty three yarder missed in twenty twenty one, a sixty four yarder missed in twenty nineteen, a seventy yarder. I don't blame him on that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but surprisingly, also a miss. But so this he was zero like, percent. Zero percent over sixty two, but this was gonna be the one with the big pressure <laughs> on the road. It doesn't work for anyone. But maybe it'll work for us. Yeah, kind of ridiculous altogether. Just it, awful. Awful. Mistakes cost them the game. Rust was fine. I mean, twenty nine for forty two, three hundred and forty yards, just one touchdown. Uh someone here at the table may have wagered on the over 1.5 in the game uh he did not get that done whoopsies but geno smith 23 for 28 yeah. two touchdowns zero interceptions 195 yards that's not a lot but he also you know just orchestrated the offense to do just enough yes and he couldn't have done it without will disley oh big montana will disley I love that this man I, will never die. Now, is this three for 43 and a touchdown? Now, is does Jason get $100? Oh, no. Jimmy Graham's out of the league now. Oh, so is, is so the, the bet's bet over. The bet's yeah. done. <laughs> the bet's done. DK Metcalf caught all of his passes, but just seven for 36. I think you saw in this game exactly why the concern, the draft capital, all of the problems in the receivers like they schemed their way to offensive success it wasn't get in the pocket challenge downfield it was we're going to use three different tight ends right will disley colby parkinson noah fant all caught two or more passes and then we're going to use short area high percentage don't yep. throw an interception throws yeah i mean the seahawks won the game but this was based far more on their defense than their offense uh, I mean, they scored a total of 17 points. So you know that you're not going to get a lot of wide receiver glory when you put up 17 points. Uh, Metcalf also had a fumble, uh, which hurt his fantasy value. So it, it's certainly those are players where you're you're holding your breath for their fantasy value going forward. <laughs> we got waivers on the show today, and Nathaniel Hackett Brooks is he's the he's the top answer, huh? By far. <laughs> I mean, like. If you haven't seen the clip of from the Manning cast of you have Hall of Fame quarterbacks Peyton Manning and Eli Manning, uh, and I think uh, I think Shannon Sharp was on some someone else was on with them. Bunch of gold uh, jackets, got and it. Like, and 
the uh, like they're going up to do the the fourth down, and and Peyton Manning's just like, I, I, I would take a time out here. E, let's talk about this. Let's let's talk. Let's talk about this. And the clock is just going. It's like you got and, three timeouts. And these three hosts cannot believe what they are watching of the ineptitude. And then followed up. They eventually call the timeout. And then the the terrible throw the throw the ball behind the sticks type of a play. It was just like I can't remember a coaching decision other than the the punt to tie is like whatever. This was just truly pants crapping. It Mike has so some bad. strong feelings. It was so so bad. Let's talk about the offensive pieces for Russell. Javante Williams. Oh my goodness. Only seven carries, but negative game script for him, and that turned into eleven yeah. receptions for Javante Williams. Melvin Gordon, twelve for fifty eight on the ground, which was great. Both of these guys lost a goal line fumble. Had they both got in, yeah. that would have looked much nicer. Yeah, the game would have been completely different. Uh, a lot of fantasy managers would have been much happier. It was you, you might walk away going, wow, Melvin Gordon was really the, the one running the ball. But for fantasy purposes, you want the targets. And 12 targets to two targets, Javante to Melvin Gordon, that's where the value comes. I mean, if you're talking about... I, I believe that that means Javante Williams led the league in targets at the running back position in week one. Can't ask for much more than that. So then uh, Cortland Sutton, four for 72. Jerry Judy, four for 102. And the big touchdown, the only touchdown mm -hmm. for the uh, for Russell Wilson. They used multiple tight ends. You came out and watched Andrew Beck catch two big uh, passes, and, yeah. were, and you're sitting there going, uh, <laughs> Albert Aguabanam. Where are you? But he did get involved five for 33. Nothing special there. Any takeaways? I mean, KJ Hamler was just one target, so not involved at all. Yeah, I mean, he's still working his way back in. Uh, the The takeaway what for me was it, it took some time, but which, I mean, certainly was never panicking watching the first few quarters there where Cortland Sutton is not involved at all. But he, they got it going. I know he was tied with with Judy in targets, but Cortland Sutton was being used down the field. the The Jerry Judy touchdown was a great play by Judy, but I mean, it was it was kind of broken. Yeah, it looked like it should have been intercepted. Yeah, and then, it was very close to that, and then and the the DB dismissed the tackle, and then Judy, fast to his credit, scored the touchdown. And both look like they will be fine, especially if yep. Hamler is not involved. If you have Hamler as a flyer, I'm probably moving on to. The waiver wire, because that's what we're talking about today, and there's going to be some names that I would like more than waiting on Hamler to get involved. Sure. A couple of reminders before we move forward into the news. We have uh, a lot going on on the Fantasy Footballers Discord channel, which you can get to at thefantasyfootballers.com slash Discord. It is free to get in there. There is a trivia night tonight. Papa Josh runs the events over there, and there are tons of fantasy football players that you will want to hang out with and, uh, you know, tilt with if yeah, you had a man. rough week or brag yeah. about your team too. So uh, check that out, thefantasyfootballers.com slash Discord, and the community is jointhefoot.com. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Dak Prescott underwent hand surgery as expected for his fractured thumb. They apparently are not putting him on injured reserve. Jerry Jones said he thought he could return in as fast as four weeks. Ian Rappaport says they're looking at week eight as a possible return. That is upsetting in the sense that we saw this with Russell Wilson last year. He beat the heck out of the timeline. I mean, he came back so much quicker than people thought from uh, his hand issue and he really shouldn't have because <laughs> he was uh, bad. It turns out you use your throwing hand when you throw the ball. So I, I feel like I would rather Dak just take the time he needs than rush him back. Because... I, I don't take that view. Okay. Do because tell. I am concerned about CeeDee Lamb. And I think if there's any percentage chance that Dak does return and is fine, because that's a possibility as well. He sure. could come back and not be as ineffective as Russ was, that has to help CD. Like if there's a real chance oh. he comes back in four weeks, CD might not be a 
panic button. Yeah, if he can come, all I want is him to come back at one hundred percent. Right, that's all right. I want. But it's ironic because our reason for having opposite opinions is the same. It's Ceedee Lamb. That is it. Like DK Metcalf last year was far better with Geno Smith than with broken Russell Wilson after he returned. So that's just the you, one thing. What I, do you do though if CD's if it's eight weeks? I mean. Sure, CD might be okay in eight weeks, but you're talking about week nine of the fantasy season. Well, they, we we do have Cooper Rush with you know the one start last year that turned into eleven targets for Amari Cooper that turned into ten targets for CD Lamb. So he had a good game. So maybe I believe that was on was that on Halloween? Halloween night. Yeah, I remember trick or treating and like catch. <laughs> there was like people out you know with the candies and they have their televisions so. I'd, you know, just be like, well, slow down at this house. Got to watch some of this game here. Uh, but not – what's the IR rule now? Is it – I can't – is it three weeks? Four. Four? I I, I think it's I – li I like being an optimist about these things. Like, the, have positive thoughts for your injury. But at the same time, you got to have at least some level of a realistic viewpoint. I can't – he had a fractured thumb. He's not coming back in a month. It's ridiculous. What would you do if you were the head coach or general manager and Dak came and said, just don't put me on IR? I want to try to get back from this. I would say, uh, Mr. Jerry Jones, what would you like me to do? I, that, this is a Jerry Jones decision, in my opinion. Well, I mean, what if Dak came to Jerry Jones then and said, hey, yeah, just don't put Jerry. me on IR? Don't put me on IR. I think I might be able to get back faster. That's uh, They're not going to. He, Andy is saying, if <laughs> you sorry. were Jerry Jones, oh, what would I'm, you say in response? Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I was not hearing you correctly. <laughs> so, like, what would you say to Dak when Dak says, don't, please don't put me on IR? Would you say, I say that we, we need to make room for Jimmy Garoppolo? <laughs> no, I would, I would say, okay, we won't trade for the quarterback, but we need, we need your spot. Like, we need to field players who are actually going to play and help this team. Elijah Mitchell has been placed on IR, expected to miss up to eight weeks with a sprained MCL. So a lot of fantasy players are going to be trying to find a solution for their absence now in a starting running back spot. Yeah, this is the biggest waiver storyline of the day, so we'll talk about it here shortly. There have been reports that there is a good chance Najee Harris will play in week two. Okay. Uh, I can tell you that from my interpretation of what took place and then much more importantly, you know, talking to our injury expert Matthew Betts, Skepticism abounds on that possibility. Uh, Matthew Betts at the Fantasy PT on Twitter says, every report seems to indicate the Najee injury isn't serious. Maybe it's not, but this looks like a high ankle mechanism to me. So there is some concern from Matthew Betts on whether he will, you know, he said watch practice this week. See what Najee does in practice. Does he make an appearance? He was awful. On yeah. the ground, I mean, just that's. I, I think the outside of a touchdown catch, he did nothing. I think the the big takeaway here is not necessarily is Najee going to be good to go. It's if he is good to go, it, like if he plays, can you actually play him with the inefficiency of Week One? He doesn't get the same target volume because it's not Ben Roethlisberger anymore, and he has a a bum foot or a bum ankle. We're not sure what exactly what the injury was yet. It's a very scary proposition should he even be active like I think him being active is like the worst case scenario for fantasy Pittsburgh targeted their running backs the fewest times in the league in week one whoa and that if sucks. you if you watch the game and you watched Mitch Trubisky's eyeballs they never even scanned the flats they did not look at the places that Big Ben were looking and then they play New England so that's your decision you're going to decide on Najee against yeah, New England coming brutal. off an injury so Jalen Warren's name is going to come up here yep. shortly as well. Saints coach Dennis Allen said Alvin Kamara was battling a rib issue in week one. Okay. Could explain some of the underutilization, the workload being diminished, and the forcing of Mark Ingram on the field. So we'll monitor that. Looks like a few weeks for Chris Godwin. Uh, come on. Hamstring injury. Uh, the good news is they did confirm that it – his knee is fine. It has nothing to do with the knee. And that I think that was the fear. Like, you knew it was called a hamstring. Originally, it was like they thought it was a calf. But there was always the fear on the play of, like, did he tweak the knee? Is it, like, just, oh, don't be the knee? And so that's that's good news. But uh, it'll, it'll be a minute before we see him. And then news just breaking this morning. Chargers wide receiver Keenan Allen, unlikely to play Thursday. I think we all expected that to be the situation. 
but there's optimism after tests that the hamstring injury is not long term. Yeah, let's hope it's just two missed games going forward. And two missed games? Is that, is that because you would be facing <laughs> Keenan I, Allen? Wow. Yeah, the week after next. Uh, wow. Very yeah, self-interested. So very no, selfish. No, I want a healthy Keenan for, for Keenan. Mm -hmm. it's for, Unbelievable. It's for him. Yeah, this is what the taking longer to get back at full strength thing will do. Oh, exactly. you just, you're just hoping he doesn't come back too soon. Really, this is for you, Andy. You, you have him in the league of record. I, want, I don't want him to come back and get uh, re-injured. Against you. Well, I mean, no. I, I, now I, you're I in a pickle. For, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't have anything to do with you having Mike Williams. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> Heal up, Keenan. <laughs> that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break and back with the waivers. Keenan was, Keenan was so on fire to start that game. I, it's such a bummer that he got hurt. He was dominating. So hopefully it's a short-term injury. It's time for the main event. Very important waiver segment for week one. Welcome to The Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. All right, it's time. A lot of people asking questions about who they can drop. You can't add players to your team without dropping somebody that you invested a draft pick in, and you invested a draft pick because you believed in the possibility of success for that player. So we went through Twitter. Instagram looked at some of the top names. I want to throw them out first before we get into the waiver pickups, and we're starting a wide receiver. But here are some names that have been brought up. Marquez Valdez Scantling. Would you drop him? I am, Thursday night football game. I'm okay dropping him, but I don't. He's not like a. I don't think he's a, a bum, and it'll be terrible all year long. Robert Woods. Yeah, yes. I would drop him. Robert would drop Woods him. should get the drop. The targets per route run of both rookie wide receivers for the Tennessee Titans were outstanding, and they should only become more and more involved as the season goes on. What about Devontae Smith, who was a goose in week one as oh, the man. now wide receiver two for the Philadelphia Eagles? I don't think I would drop him. He didn't. It wasn't like he didn't have any targets. He was 0 for 4, and the offense looked Good, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to Devonta Smith. We'll come back to that. He did lead the team in snaps at wide receiver position. So Kadarius Tony. That's the one. Here we are. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I, I have some some guys I want to pick up. I have Kadarius Tony. And here's my issue with Tony. He looked exactly like what you hoped mm -hmm. he was going to be when you drafted him. He had two touches in that game, both of which he was dead to rights, and he juked about 12 people, picked up positive yards, made good uh, a good decision to not throw the ball on one where he it was kind of a trick play where he's going to yep. throw it. It w was great. Those two touches were his only two touches, and he only was on the field for seven snaps. And my hope was this, this was because he had been dealing with injuries throughout camp and preseason, and they wanted to bring him back along slowly. But after the game... When they were at, when media was asking Brian Dable about this, Brian Dable just said, "Those are the packages we have. You're going to see him more. You're going to see him less. It's just depending on how the packages play." I thought he was fine on the times he was in the game, and then he was asked later, "Are you going to see him, you know, more in the future?" And he's like, eh, "You know, it could be packages, more, could be less. packages, packages." <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't a health thing. I don't know that that said they're going to see him more. Not going to but it wasn't them protecting his health. I think it's still possible it was. We, d we didn't agree on the interpretation of that. I thought he was very standoffish about the questions. So it, 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 he doesn't have to reveal whether he's dealing with an injury. That, that, that's one of those coaching things where you give the other team an advantage. It's still possible that he was – even a lack of practice, right? He may be healthy now, but he could have practi not practiced in these packages. Yeah. Packages, packages. And Wandale Robinson, their second-round rookie wide receiver, sustained a, a knee injury during Do the game. Do we have any more details on uh, Wandale? Yeah. Kyle, we, we, can we, you get on get onto the Wandale news? Yeah, just look that up. But Kadarius Tony to me, is definitely not a drop. The guy is too talented. 
Uh, it's with one week. Now, if we go out in week two and it's the exact same thing where he's just, he's not even on the field, then I'll consider moving on from him. But for one week, I will hold on to the talent. Good. good. Thank you. I needed that. You're welcome. Because he's so good. He's also, how dare you Twitter? Alan Robinson, a, t a drop candidate. hundred percent. No. Devonte Parker is hundred percent. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> I would. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want the passing game for new England. Right now, Juan uh, Robinson's considered day-to-day -day with a knee injury. No other details. Thank you, Mr. Dable. Uh, see what I mean? <laughs> he's not He's not telling us very much because he's such a winner. Yeah. And awesome. these are the things that got him the victory. It's, All he does. It is so funny, the difference <laughs> that a point makes. You know, if, if they don't get in, if Saquon Barkley doesn't push through the tackle and, yep. and he loses, the – the media and the fan base is going to be so against Brian Dayball. He didn't do enough. They didn't score much. You got to change things. Yeah. And just Saquon made Brian Dayball a successful coach that week. Incredible. He looked great. All right. Main waiver wire pickups at the wide receiver position. And the roster percentages we're sharing with you come from Sleeper, but check your league. Obviously, they, they, will, they will be different. Yeah. Yeah. They vary. Julio Jones is near the top of the list. Five targets, three for 69, was rocket ship fast on the field. His roster percentage is 75%. He was drafted in three quarters of leagues. Yeah, he had a very nice game. I would say that um, if he's available, he's maybe my, he's my number one wide receiver pickup just because of the Chris Godwin injury. He's probably not available, but worth looking. I am looking at Jarvis Landry and Jahan Dotson here, who are both above 50% roster percentage. Landry went 7 for 114 on 9 targets, 26% target share. Jahan Dotson, 5 targets for uh, 3 for 40 and 2 on 88% of snaps. And I look at those two players as complete opposites mm -hmm. for the course of the year. Landry's potential involvement should decline. Olave will mature and be more involved. Michael Thomas off the injury could be more involved, whereas Dotson, his pathway to becoming a premier 1B type of receiver seems to be right in front of him. I would prefer Dotson. Now, do you prefer Dotson over Curtis Samuel, his his teammate who had 11 targets, which led the team, was 8 for 55 and a score. 55! Also, some Debo Samuel usage out of the backfield. That one, that one's a little more difficult, but yes, I would prefer okay. Dotson because I think his touchdowns are going to be more predictable, but that's just my opinion. I don't know where Jason sits on that. I, I lean Curtis Samuel right now. I was high on Curtis Samuel going into last season. They paid him a lot of money with his former coaching staff, and then obviously he missed the whole season with mm -hmm. injury, and so he became an afterthought. I didn't draft him this year in the draft. I was very pro Jahan Dotson. I like both of these players, but I, I feel like given the money, the experience, and the fact that he had 11 targets and rushes, an extremely valuable part of this offense, I lean the Curtis Samuel side, even though you still have the unknown, beautiful upside of the first-round rookie wide receiver. So I guess, Mike, you'll have to be the tiebreaker here. And how much would you invest for these players? Yeah. Like, how enthusiastic are sure. you about a Washington I, receiver here? I'm not going to break the bank on either of these receivers. Receivers are easier to come by, you know, 10% or under of my fab budget is what I would be doing. And yeah. if Julio was out there, would you invest more than that? Oh, yes. Julio? Yeah. Uh, the Julio 30 40%? How much? I... I 25% for me. If you really need a wide receiver, I'd be willing to go over the 30 threshold because I think he's going to be good for a long time. Otherwise, I, I'm in agreement with the Washington of don't make a huge investment. If I'm picking between the two players, I'm probably going after Curtis Samuel, though. Of Sure. Uh, just I think that his usage will be more secure on a week-to-week -week basis. I am curious about some other names here that had significant week ones how you're viewing them. There are a couple of players that look like more longer term values. And mm -hmm. then there are some that look like weekly, like a step in start. The one week start category looks like Joshua Palmer. Yep. And Tyler Boyd. Yep. Because we don't know what the concussion protocol for T Higgins will produce. If he'll be back, 
So that's that would be why you'd take a flyer on Tyler Boyd, who played 80% of snaps, scored a touchdown. And then Joshua Palmer, with the absence of Keenan Allen, should be featured in a Thursday night football game against a really tough <laughs> – it should be a high-scoring affair against the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, the last time we saw him without Keenan Allen, he had seven targets, five receptions, 66 yards, and a touchdown. I think Josh Palmer, and that, and he's gotten better since then. Sure. He's always passed the eyeball test. So he's a guy that I think if you are looking for a spot start, he's a wonderful pickup. I think he'll be a very good play this week. It is more probable that people aren't looking for a weekly start in week two, though, because the guys that kind of let them down that they drafted – I think you're you're not bailing on them. You know you're not you're not starting Josh Palmer over an Allen Robinson. Um, you're going to stay the course. So I think you're looking more for the longer term plays here. And and what about Devontae Smith? I mean, if you had Devontae Smith, I'd play Palmer over him. I would play Palmer over over him, but I wouldn't drop Devontae Smith for Josh Palmer. You wouldn't? No, because I'm probably a, I'm guessing that my roster has someone that I would play Palmer. over Palmer. But still. what if it doesn't? If I have to make a start. Then get then take the points. Okay. Then then I would be willing to make that transaction. DJ Chark was four for fifty two and a touchdown. Not rostered in uh, well, he's rostered in forty six percent of leagues. Yeah, but he was on the field a ton. We're talking a ninety seven percent route participation, twenty two percent target share for a team that they're. I mean, the, they're going to have to keep up. I, we, this is. The, the off-season narrative of why their offense was interesting is there's going to be a lot of targets to go around. You're taking on the Minnesota Vikings, or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Washington, Washington, and then the Minnesota Vikings after that. Like two games where these these could be higher scoring games that DJ Chark will be involved, and he's also a big play wide receiver. Amon Ra is a great wide receiver, but the player more likely to hit on the nine route would be DJ Chark. All right, low roster percentage options. Robbie Anderson had a big week. Donovan Peoples-Jones, 11 targets. Greg Dortch, nine <laughs> targets, seven for 63 for Arizona, waiting for the return of Rondale Moore, yeah. DeAndre Hopkins, Antoine Wesley, and a healthy Zach Ertz. And then Kyle Phillips. Please consider adding Kyle yes. Phillips. He was nine, uh, nine targets, six for 66, and he's the rookie wide receiver who was making a lot of waves during the preseason and seems to have transitioned that immediately into a significant role for Ryan Tannehill. He had a 43% targets per route run, led the NFL on only 21 routes. He had nine targets. So when he was on the field, yeah, <clears throat> they were looking his way. That is one of the more predictive stats. So I definitely think Kyle Phillips should be picked up and looked at especially in PPR leagues cuz he's not he doesn't project to be some dominant, you know, uh, deep threat that's going to just be a touchdown machine. He's going to get targets and um be more of a PPR type of guy. But Greg Dorch is a name I think what? I it, don't get it. It's... Here here's here's why. I Rondell Moore I cannot see getting back. I mean, we we haven't heard an update. Cliff said he was 50-50 last yeah, week. Yeah, sure. Um if Rondale Moore is out, Greg Dortch is someone that throughout training camp was, the you know, people kept bringing this name up that you hadn't heard of. It's because it's fun to say. Then throughout preseason, they, he just kept dominating. And then he comes out in week one and gets nine targets, seven for 63, and is super involved. So at some point you go, oh, this is the number two wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, and he's free. So if you're in a waiver priority system and you're like, ah, I need a weekly start, like, don't burn your priority. Nobody's putting a priority bid on Greg Dortch. Just let it go and then pick him up for free when the waiver's clear or put a $0 bid in. I'm not I'm not saying like, oh, you have to go get Greg Dortch. I'm saying you can get him when things are over and done with and spend nothing. Yeah, I his name is really fun to say. Yeah, it, it is. is. Dortch. What a Dortch. <laughs> All right, running back waiver pickups. Here are some Drop candidates. Give me a yes or no. Okay. Cam Akers. <laughs> no. no. Would you drop Cam Akers for James Robinson? Yes. Oh, yes, yeah. for sure I would. Goodness gracious. Would you drop him for his backfield mate, 
Daryl Henderson. For the starter? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So those are two players that, that, is pain. that are heavily rostered, but if they're not and you have Cam Akers and you have to make a decision, oh. I would do the swap on both. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you have some other back-end wide receiver that didn't pan out that I would drop before I would drop Cam Akers. Like, I'm not dropping Cam Akers, but if he is the last guy and you have an upgrade you can make, which is probably not true, then it's worth doing. James Cook. Yeah, you can drop him. Mike Davis. Yes. Yeah, yes. definitely you drop him. See you him. later. Yeah. Tony Pollard, no. who was... No. I, I don't know, man. I look, it, He was not... Good. Totally and not used and awful on third down pass protection. Totally agree. Uh, and I had Zeke on my League of Record roster, and I was screaming at the television to get him in more because Zeke was was killing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the ground. But I'm not dropping Tony Pollard at this point. He was he was even such with the a huge, situation at quarterback because that that would be the thing that convinces me I don't want the. Second running back on that offense with a but I don't, seven I, year uh, yeah, seven but week it's like, break. It, it's a one B though to me. It's they were like especially at the very end of the game. Even even as Twitter was accurately pointing out just how bad the pass protection was for Tony Pollard at the end of the game when they were trying to catch up, it was all Tony Pollard at that point. One of the he's going to be on the field. One of the things with bad pass catching is is a way to beat a blitz is not necessarily to keep your back in to protect but to leak them out and just dump it over the top I do think that there is a world where the change from Dak and the acknowledgement now of preparing you know they lost their left guard and that wasn't planned they know now that they have no protection here and a backup quarterback I think little dump offs to running backs I, I, I could see Tony Pollard's utilization being more in week two than week one but he's also you know I'm not dropping Alexander Madison or some of these great uh insurance backs and I, I do think that he still qualifies as that even if he's not a standalone playable option all right well let's talk about taking a shot on Jalen Warren then because Jalen Warren is seven percent rostered Pittsburgh essentially Steelers yeah why uh running back for the Steelers played every snap after Najee Harris left we're being told Najee will come back it's a New England matchup, but if Najee is not on the field, is Jalen Warren a flex-worthy play immediately? He is. He would be flex-worthy should Najee Harris miss the game, but are you excited to play Jalen Warren? Because I'm not excited to play healthy Najee Harris against the New England Patriots or like an undrafted player. I know he took over from uh, – he took Benny Snell's job, which, I mean, that's not really – it doesn't seem like a difficult thing for a professional running back to do these days, but he'll get all the volume. It just it feels like it's going to be very disappointing at the end. If you're expecting, like, yeah, the, the backup for the Steelers, workhorse, he's going to come in and dominate, I think he'll be fine-ish. Let me ask you a question. What would you invest, Jason, if you were the Najee manager? on Jalen Warren because of some question marks around the foot. I think that's who's probably going to end up getting Jalen Warren because, you know, if I had Najee and I want to protect him, I would probably throw uh, 30%. Wow, that much? Well, because I think it, it really does secure. You saw in week one what was presumed, assumed, and talked about before the season, which is that it's Jalen Warren as the guy. We know from history that when – the starter goes down, they just bring in another guy and use him in that same workhorse role. I agree that if I'm looking for, if I'm not the Najee manager, and I think this is a one or two week thing, the matchup against New England and then even at Cleveland, it's those aren't great games. So you're talking about a player that is probably going to be ranked, like if he's the starter, is probably going to be ranked outside the top 24 running backs. So it's like it's someone you're still not excited to start. But if you've got Najee and you're worried, okay, this is a high ankle or something that's going to keep him out four, five, six weeks, you've got to protect that position. So um, I'm not going hard after Jalen Warren personally because I don't have Najee. I, I was surprised by your 30 number. I thought that was high. No, that was only if I have okay. Najee. Okay. If I don't have Najee, he's probably just going in a list of players um, You know that, that I – like I would much rather have – Jeff Wilson. We could talk about the the San Francisco okay. situation because that's that's a known thing. He's for sure out. Uh, Elijah Mitchell is out. He's going to be out for a long time. Now the unsure thing is who's it going to be. Let's talk about the San Francisco situation. Let's do it. So Jeff Wilson, Jordan Mason, Ty Davis Price. Mm -hmm. I imagine 
all three of those will be added in some leagues because of the unknown situation for Shanahan. Ty Davis Price was the higher draft capital, yet inactive, Trey Sermon of the Year award for the 49ers. Jeff Wilson, 9 for 22, two targets, 2 for 8, 59% of snaps. Elijah Mitchell's out for two months. This is an opportunity, but we, you know, what are you doing because of the ambiguity in the backfield? So it's not one backup that you can go out. Like if, if Cook was out, Dalvin Cook, for two yeah, months, yeah. and you'd be like, oh, okay, I'm going to go spend 70% of my budget on, on Madison. Madison. Yeah, you'd feel much more confident in that situation. For this one, I, I, we have the information that we have. And Jeff Wilson was – once Elijah Mitchell was out, Jeff Wilson was the the running back who got touches. Of other, I mean, Debo is going to be in the back. Trey uh, Trey Lance is going to run a lot, but Jeff Wilson was the featured running back. And again, that game was a slosh fest. It was it it was craziness throughout the entire game. Uh, Ty Davis Price, head coach Shanahan, came out and said that the reason he was out and Jordan Mason was active was because of special teams, which. I mean, that completely makes sense. If you want to try and get into the psychology of Kyle Shanahan, good luck. Uh, and you could take the shot that it's that it will, in fact, be Ty Davis Price or Jordan Mason. But I'm making the heavier investment on Jeff Wilson. I, I mean, I'm going decently hard after Wilson. If you need, if you need that running back help, I'm willing to go in the 40s or a little bit higher for what I'm projecting to be the starter for the next couple months. Maybe he's toast. Last year we kind of played this game that you're going to stash Jeff, stash Jeff Wilson should something happen. He was injured for the vast majority of the season, did get an opportunity to start, looked pretty toasted last year. So that is a major concern. But he's still, as of week two, he is still Kyle Shanahan's dude, and that's what matters when it comes to running back opportunity. Yeah, I'm pushing my chips in on Jeff Wilson. I, you know, Jordan Mason. I've talked him up in, in in the sense of a name that you need to know, and the opportunity is here. But he didn't get a touch. Like Elijah Mitchell went down, he was active, and Jeff Wilson got all the work. Um, it, it's it's probably all three of these backs are going to be active for game time, and I'm guessing that Jordan Mason will be in the special teams role again, and that it will be Jeff Wilson as a starter with Ty Davis Price backing him up. I think Ty. I think Jeff Wilson does much better when it's not in you know the the sloshing uh, mud pits right. of Chicago and so he's he's my number one waiver pickup of the week across all positions I think he is a starting running back for the San Francisco 49ers good running team for the next two months Jeff Wilson did have a very big game against the Falcons in week 15 last year where like the the first kind of action came for him in week 10 and that's where he was looking really, really bad. So maybe he just wasn't healthy until the end of the year. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see. I don't know how heavy I'm willing to go. Obviously, if you need a start and James Robinson and Dale Henderson are out there, oh. they're taking priority over Wilson. What would you spend? Because a quarter of leagues have James Robinson or Daryl Henderson available. What would you spend on those two guys? I think on James Robinson, I'm about 60% of my budget, and Daryl Henderson, I'm probably about – I can, nice. I can. I can. Yeah. Agree with I that. like those numbers. Uh, Kenneth Gainwell, Jamal Williams, J.D. McKissick, uh, Rex Burkhead. Yeah. I mean, Do you have interest in these players, and and more so, would you drop? You know, a Tony Pollard. Yeah. 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 Well, I hate you, uh, Tony Pollard, Mike Davis, James Cook. Would you drop those players for all of those names? I. Right. I Again, sorry. Again, I'm not dropping Pollard. The other two, the other two guys, I'm dropping them for anybody. Mike Davis is, I mean, the, this is toast. It was Kenyon Drake was the primary running back for this team. Yeah, I would and, drop Mike Davis for Kenyon Drake. <laughs> yes, immediately. Ex exactly. And J.K. Dobbins will be back eventually. Of that group, you you listed off. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's Rex Burkhead. It's super painful to say, but it is Rex Burkhead. The those. What I was saying about Jeff Wilson, where if is he toast? I don't know. Does Kyle Shanahan like him? That's all that matters. And head coach Lovey Smith 
likes him some Rex Burkhead, likes him more than than Damian Pierce, it would seem, at least at this point. I would expect over the course of the season, you know, those those lines will cross and eventually Damian Pierce will be the featured guy, at least when it comes to the carries. That was the wildest part is you had a positive game script and it was Rex Burkhead on the ground, but eight targets to go with the 14 carries. It's inefficient. It's going to be gross, but the volume will be there. Rex Burkhead last year, the last eight games of the season, do you know he was on pace for 244 carries? <laughs> he was their lead running back. What, what are they doing? He was their lead running back. He was on pace for 295 opportunities. <laughs> like, And then we come out week one, and that's the same situation. He's, he's oh, in. Oh, man. So, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, Rex Burkhead is someone that I think you can pick up. Uh, here's a question. Would you drop Damian Pierce for Rex Burkett? No. <laughs> I mean, I, I no, I wouldn't either because I, I, I'm looking at winning my league. Sure. Yes. And so I hope that the rookie has the opportunity to ascend to a place where he makes a big difference on my roster, and Rex Bulkhead, you know, <laughs> getting all the carries, it doesn't make a difference. That's like saying, would you drop Damian Pierce for Mark Ingram last year? Mark Ingram was just ho hum. In Houston. Let me ask you this. No, please don't. If you have Damian Pierce, yeah. are you going after Rex Burkhead and taking up two of your roster no. spots with the Texans backfield? No, no. I'd rather I'd rather not do that. That's going to okay. cost me a lot of money in counseling later. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you want to win, if you, you know, we're trying to win leagues, and I agree with that analysis. Rex Burkhead isn't going to push you over the top for a championship. He's going to get utilized. He's probably more important in a weird DFS lineup than than otherwise. But the name that I think I'm looking at, I'm I'm making a play for him, whether I need him or not, and, and you don't really need him right now, is Rashad White. Rashad White was the second guy up. So what happened at the end of this game, a lot of people, I, I haven't heard it talked about, and we're going to watch the practice reports. Hopefully it's nothing. But Leonard Fournette at the end of that game mm -hmm. kind of hobbled off the field and never went back on the field. It was Rashad White the rest of the game. And Rash what that said to me was not, oh, my gosh, Lynn Fournette's out. Rashad White's going to be the dude. I've got to pay a lot on Fab. I've got to pick him up. It said that Rashad White was the official backup. And he is a pass-catching, explosive athlete. He is an Alexander Madison type of league winner should something happen to Leonard Fournette. Now, there's the added value of, if Leonard Fournette's not practicing a little bit this week and we go, wow, what, what happened to that the end of the game? Maybe we could be surprised and Rashad White gets more play this week, but he looks to me to be a high-value uh, insurance option. And because he's a pass catcher and he's got Tom Brady, if he gets the opportunity, dude is going to smash. Okay, and Godwin's injured for a while too, so the running back pass catching role, even more important. What do you make of the Isaiah Pacheco situation? Because I think a lot of Fab Dollars waiver priorities are going to be spent on Pacheco. It, his production came in the back half of the game, but yep. he produced. So you did you earned some, you know, credit in the eyes of your coaching staff when you go out there and you smash. Now Jarek McKinnon was heavily involved. Clyde edwards helaire was heav heavily involved. All three backs got touches. We're going to see him on Thursday if Pacheco has a big game on Thursday, the price will go way up. Yeah, I think he's a great stash. Uh, he's not someone that you're going to put into your roster right now, but he was over five a carry, got a touchdown, and looked as good as he did in preseason in real NFL action. Granted, I feel like at that point in the game, he was playing against Cardinals was players that quarter. really wanted to get out of that stadium. Yeah. So, um, it Reminding I, me of the Gus Edwards explosions that always happened in Baltimore right? in the fourth quarter of blowouts. But but what happens if it just keeps happening? Every sure. <laughs> like, oh, it's another blowout. <laughs> Isaiah Pacheco being a good fantasy option. I think you should pick him up and stash him. Um, you know, I, I think he's uh, more valuable than some of those, you know, the 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 James Cook, Mike Davis types. I would I would rather have Pacheco. Yes. All right. Top tight end drop uh, drop candidates from people on Twitter. Cole Komet. No. I would not be dropping Cole Komet. No, not at all. Irv Smith. I would be happy to drop. For these names we're talking about, I would rather have the other names on waivers. Alberto. I'd rather have the names on waivers. So those names are Gerald Everett, Hayden Hurst, Robert Tunyon, Taysom. No. The fantasy hitman Hill. Nope. And Tyler Cox. 
Conklin. I I would not be picking up Tyler Conklin. I would rather have Irv Smith and Albert O. I know he was uh, involved. Seven targets. He, he, yeah, he was involved. Seven targets, 50 routes run. That's great. But it was for the Jets and didn't, you know, his seven targets turned into 14 yards. And a touchdown. Oh, okay, and a touchdown. And a touchdown. Uh, but Can't get touchdowns if you're not running routes. I would rather go with the other guys, Gerald Everett, Hayden Hurst, Robert Tunyon, and Taysom Hill in that order for me. Yes, man. You Taysom Hill over Conklin? Yeah, I think I I'm... would go Taysom Hill over Conklin. He is he's a, a, a – put it this way. If you get inside the 10-yard line, Tyler Conklin got a touchdown this last week, so did Taysom Hill. If I had to bet money on who's getting a touchdown here for each offense, I think they're going to use Taysom Hill around there, and he's far more likely to get a touchdown than than Conklin. My top two would be Tunyon and Everett. I think Tunyon, you're only starting to see the beginning of yeah. his heavy involvement in the offense. He has the highest upside of them all, in my opinion, and the rookies, it's tough in the streets in Green Bay. You need Alan Lazard back to help that offense, but Tunyon, I think, will be heavily involved. Everett has an opportunity with the Allen injury this week and beyond. It may get murky, and you may have some really tough weeks with Gerald Everett if it's a, you know, Mike Williams, non-existent in that last game, Keenan Allen off the field in that last game. So I think, and, and, and even Austin Eckler in the passing game really wasn't heavily involved. So, you know, I'm not saying Everett is a flash, you know, one-week guy, but... I'm a little curious how that shakes out. And then Tanyan, like I said, I'm excited about. Taysom Hill, look, if I if my tight end I know is going to get four or five carries out of the backfield, some in high high value situations, it's interesting to me. I don't think I'm going to get goosed by Taysom Hill. Yeah, I, 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 Taysom Hill is a tier break below those other three. Um, Gerald Everett, Tanyan, and Hurst. And Hurst has the same situation. Where, you know, Gerald yes. Everett doesn't have Keenan Allen. I don't think we're expecting T. Higgins to – well, we don't know. It's, yeah, we it's don't too know. early to know in the week, but Higgins could easily miss this game with a concussion. If that happens, Hayden Hurst had eight targets, so those are Joe, Joe Burrow targets, not Joe Flacco targets. Yeah, I, I'm in agreement that Robert Tunyon would be my uh, my, my first pickup. I, he, kind of, he got featured on uh, the Sunday live stream, which hopefully you, you tune, tune into those because we're getting real actionable news. And like The fact that, that Tunyon was not on the – injury report was shocking I mean he tore the ACL in the middle of the season it I, I did not expect him to be back at the beginning of the year I didn't expect him to be fully healthy ACLs are crazy and if it and it feels like they're not fully predictable just where all over the map these players have been and he, as he gets healthier and healthier he will be uh, a go-to target he only played thirty six percent of snaps yep. and still ended up three for thirty six. Yeah, he's he's very interesting. Uh, and Can I ask you a question about yes, where he do. would fall in line if people because people are going to react, right? Sure. They're going to drop David and Joku. Some Colt Komet is going to hit the waiver wire because zero that hurts. Yeah. Are you prioritizing those dropped players over these guys? Uh, in Joku, uh, that's a tough call. I think I would. I, I think I would go with, with Tunyon over in Joku. What about Everett? Uh, probably. I would go Everett probably. as well. You look at the but, quarterback but disparity. That, yeah. Does that go with Cole Komet too? No. Because if Cole Komet hit the waiver wire, he would take precedent over all these players to me. I th He would for me as well. Yeah, I, I throw out the, the goose from week one in the rain. I, I want Cole Komet. I think he's the going to be. The rainy goose? I, I really think <laughs> Even he's a goose be couldn't fly in that weather. No. Very involved. I mean, Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet should be soaking up the targets. Instead, the ball was soaking up the rain. All right, defensive pickups. Give me uh, Bengals. Give me two or three. <laughs> Bengals. I say it first. Um, I look. The Bengals have a great defense. Uh, they they showed that in Week One. They get to play Dallas, who has some offensive line problems. That's good for sacks with a backup quarterback in there. So, and then following Dallas, they get the Jets. So they are the number one defensive pickup for me, because even though the Steelers, oh man, did they? Their defense looks great, and they're playing against the offense of the Patriots it looks bad but the Watt injury is going to massively yeah. affect it yeah that the, the, the Watt injury is a big downer the Steelers are still in play uh because the, the, the matchups are just so juicy but I'm with Jason that the Bengals against Dallas seven point road favorites currently 
they would be my my top one. And then and I love the New, I love New England this week. Do you? I think in Pittsburgh, okay. Najee Harris limited or not playing. Good luck, Mitch Trubisky against New England. You're, you're gonna be one dimensional. I don't know if they can get it done against that defense. I don't know what the line is gonna be, but I'm under. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm under. <laughs> I feel like I will blindly bet the under on a game where forty and a half says Kyle. Forty and a half. I'm that's, taking the under. Wow, that's so low. I mean, I just don't, these the. I mean, Rose. Yeah, the two bad offenses, two decent defenses, or good defenses. I could see a twenty twenty tie, like we got in Indianapolis. There you you, go. you would make it. All right, that was Welcome to the Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. With multitasking on Galaxy Z Fold Four, you can view available players on the waiver wire, check player rankings, and watch highlights all at once. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Full stream ahead. Well, every week we are looking at streaming quarterback options, all the more important when you lose a Dak Prescott and you are trying to find a matchup that might work for you this week. I want to throw out a player I'm calling a bench streamer because apparently heavily rostered, Yep. but not started last week. Derek Carr at home against what we're calling the Arizona tertiary. It's mm -hmm. not even a secondary. I like what you do. It's yeah. awful. It's They can't put pressure on Derek Carr. 17 targets to Devontae Adams last week. I think he's going to be outstanding. And I think Arizona will keep up. That's what they – they they will do enough on offense to make this a productive game for Derek Carr. But beyond the heavily rostered Derek Carr, my start is Jared Goff. Washington allowed the most quarterback fantasy points in 2021. Jared Goff at home taking on Washington, averaging 36 pass attempts per game at home with weapons, right? Yeah. Amon Ra, DeAndre like Swift, it. DJ Chark. I think it's going to be pretty good for Jared Goff this week if you're desperate. Yeah, no, I, I, I like that quite a bit. And I am one of your bench streamer uh, players. I will be playing Derek Carr over Kirk Cousins. I have both of them in, in one of my leagues. That's pretty bold. Um, I'm going to stream. I know this will be crazy to think you can stream this player since he was, you know, the third highest scoring quarterback <laughs> on the week, scored more than Jalen Hurts, more than Kyler Murray, more than Lamar Jackson. So it's like, well, he's probably not available, right? Carson Wentz. <laughs> oh, gross. Carson Wentz is my, I uh -huh. is my streaming candidate. He's going to be across the field from Jared Goff. In Detroit, in a dome, no weather problems, had four touchdowns last week, and also now has weapons. It doesn't look like it's just the Terry McLaurin show. You add Jahan Dotson, you add Curtis Samuel, Gibson is a good pass catcher. So I think this game is one where you could end up with a lot of points. So even if you don't want to watch it. Even if you, I think I do want to watch it. Well, but I, yeah. you saw exactly Jared Goff last week. It's the same recipe for Detroit. Get down by a bunch. Jared Goff throws the ball a million times ends up fine in the end of the game. And then Carson Wentz, like you're talking about in the same matchup, he's got the weapons now. I hate that I agree <laughs> with your Carson Wentz take. My Would you bench Aaron Rodgers for him? Oh, I need some Alan Lazard news before I make that decision. Uh, my streamer will that be... That was a good escape, Mike. Yeah. Well, Professional. Was, you know who else escapes from pressure? Justin Fields will be taking on the Green Bay Packers. The rushing floor is there. We're talking 34 and a half rushing yards per game in his starts and this team this does not look like the Matt Nagy team I know we're throwing out most of the game but but the drumbeat has been very positive over the preseason for Justin Fields and I, I mean, would if, be so unconscionably terrified to do, yeah, to do that against Green Bay I, because I understand on the road I still thought that even though the water was a problem falling from the sky I didn't like the decision making of Justin Fields in that game did you guys I mean, it's it's so it's so very difficult to to truly have full takeaways from that game on it's better, and even on decision making of you don't know what's going on with with the players' feet. Guess when you have Dante game. Pettis, everything is okay. Yeah, that's what, like the the two superstars. Well, right. That's just I mean that's being generous. I Pettis guess, but and who? No, no, I'm saying <laughs> the two the two stars, Cole Komet and Darnell Mooney, did nothing for this squad last week, and a couple other. Role players were able to step up. This Green Bay defense, man, maybe they get it figured out this this week, but the, the way that they played 
specifically against Justin Jefferson. And no, Darnell Mooney is not Jefferson. But the decisions they made was like Darnell Mooney would do very similar things to that that secondary if that's how they're going to play it. So I think that uh, I think you can play him in a pinch. I think that Fields could be fine for fantasy, but the Bears are going to get destroyed. Yeah, they I are. I think it's going to like this is not an almost upset pick for me. No, well, this is yeah, like they're going to be heavily favored. Yes, this is more of a, all Bears fans will be upset at the end of it. But Justin Fields could have plenty of garbage time to get things done, even in that narrative. So other options, Mariota, the Rams, you could you could take sure. a shot at it. Matt Ryan against Jacksonville, you could take a shot at it. The Colts defense, you know, what's the truth going to be when they head to Jacksonville? Yeah, Matt, Matt Ryan, I was really going back and forth between Matt Ryan and Carson Wentz. Either one is a good option. So between these uh, names, there's someone available on waivers to stream if you lost Dak or you've got a terrible matchup uh, for whoever you drafted. All right, that is going to do it for today's show. Good luck on the waiver wire. Put those bids in. And uh, we will be back tomorrow with Ride or Die, the mailbag, the Thursday night preview, and a lot more on the podcast. See you on Discord tonight. See you tomorrow on the pod. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.